Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon to people uh, in the rest of Asia. Just a quick intro, uh, Patients Engage is an online platform operational for five years. Uh, we are focused on holistic and evidence-based management of chronic conditions. And we focus on the perspectives and lived experiences of patients and family caregivers. Uh, the value of lived experiences comes in empowering and uh, helping other patients understand that they are not alone, uh, that you know, being more engaged and understanding your condition leads to better health outcomes. And it also helps you decide, you know, make uh, better decisions. Uh, so we've been doing, I mean, our website has been uh, putting out content for about uh, more than five years. And uh, on, uh, we started webinars uh, about uh, 20 months back. But in the last uh, six weeks, we've really focused a lot more on webinars where we've talked of uh, various uh, conditions and how they are affected by uh, the current scenarios of the lockdown and uh, COVID-19. Uh, so that's a series that we've really put a lot of effort into in the last uh, uh, six weeks. And uh, as part of that series, uh, today we are talking to a, a very senior cardiac surgeon, uh, on you know, how you can stay safe if you have heart failure or you have had a heart transplant. Uh, so this was the panel, but we also have uh, another patient who's joining us. So we have with us uh, Dr. Anve Mole, who's a director, heart transplantation and advanced cardiac surgery at, uh, at General Alliance Hospital, Mumbai. He's got more than 20 years of international and Indian cardiac experience, uh, more than 120 heart transplants, 25 pediatric transplants, heart-lung transplants, uh, ECMO, and so on and so forth. So I think he, I mean, we could not have asked for a more distinguished uh, expert uh, to talk to us today. We also have with us uh, uh, Bhavna Nair, who you will see on audio only. Uh, she's a lung and heart transplant recipient uh, about a year back and Rishi Gangoli, who is also a heart transplant recipient. So they'll both talk about how they are managing and how their transplant actually prepared them for handling a lockdown like this. Uh, for people who are uh, watching us on, uh, so just a quick reminder that this does not replace your personal consultations. Uh, this is largely generic advice, so if you know, if you need to consult your doctor specifically, please do so. This session is being recorded. If you're logged into Zoom, you can put your questions on the Q&A button at the bottom, and we will pick the questions from there. If you're on Facebook, you can post them on the live feed, and uh, Zoom participants can get some privacy by renaming yourself. Uh, you can follow us always on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts, and these, these webinars are all being uploaded onto our YouTube channel. And if you ever want to write to us, have a question, you can always write at editor at patientsengage.com. So I won't get into, uh, just run straight into the discussion. So doctor, thank you once again for being with us uh, on the panel here. And uh, just wanted to start by asking, because I think heart failure is something that people don't understand enough of. So if you could just uh, you know, uh, throw some light on what heart failure is and how it's diagnosed. Yeah, good, good morning. And thank you for uh, uh, allowing me for this uh, forum and uh, to be with the patients uh, whom we have dealt with before and uh, whom are in need of uh, something for a heart transplant or a heart failure treatment to go on. Um, actually, to be very honest, the, most of the patients who are here who have undergone transplant or some sort of mechanical circulatory devices, they are uh, better people to tell what happens in heart failure than mm -hmm. I am. I can. So, uh, actually, the heart failure is a big spectrum of the problems that patient can present from one end of the spectrum to the another end of the spectrum. And it is still not fully understood uh, in medical terms. Mm -hmm. But... We, to tell these complicated things to simplify for all of us, it is basically we feel fatigue, shortness of breath, cough, which has many reasons, but this is an intractable cough and, and doesn't go easily. It is 
it it can irritate you a lot but then the the things will settle down with the medical treatment so the patient present with the main presentation of the patient is fatigability breathlessness um, the 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 Uh, the swelling on the body or the edema on the on the legs mm. and uh, recur recurrent cough that is how they usually present right right okay thank you and when does a heart patient need a transplant i think that's something that again there is we do hear of a few cases of people needing transplant but you know how is that decided when should a patient be talking about it and so on so we have this heart failure clinic and that is the main aim of this patient at this clinic is to pick up the patients who do need uh, uh, who are in real in heart failure mm. and there is no medical treatment for it or there are certain percentage of the patients or the subset of the patients who are referred for a heart transplant as a heart failure patients but they don't require a heart transplant and mm. that subset is very important to identify and they can be treated without a without a transplant and uh, uh, more than the patients who are doing the heart transplant we are more than happy to identify these patients who does not need a heart transplant and can be taken away from it so the heart failure clinic is most important thing here and i think that is the main aim of this clinic is to identify and in that subset who will require a heart transplant who are candidates for the heart transplant how early or we can wait on or hold on on them that are the two again we divide into that two subsets of these patients that uh, will require or we can wait in certain patient in some patient we should not wait and go on early that right. then are divided into two groups one who will require heart transplant only and mm. other group is one we can use the mechanical support support like assist devices like left ventricular assist devices uh, if they are not getting the organ or a donor uh, earlier and their condition is deteriorating fast okay okay um and i think for currently if somebody is listed to be on the heart transplant list i guess most heart transplants are getting delayed right in the current scenario or are you going ahead with any transplant surgeries um there are not much donors and also the recipients who are got heart failure they are not coming out of the house so they are not getting symptoms also so right. that means is that for from recipient point of view those who are listeners here uh they say you know i am fine i am very happy now i don't have any problem i don't have any symptoms but our activity has also gone down mm. so they they will be they will be very happy so they are again go in a state of denial that nothing has happened to me i am comfortable and there is no problem with me but moment they start activity or moment they start doing something then mm. then the problem will start again uh if somebody has the problem when they are sitting that is what we call orthopnea then that is a situation where they will definitely come to the hospital and mm. they will get get the treatment done right right okay um Now, and i th- sorry go ahead the, again to the question whether we are doing for transfer yes we are here to go ahead with the transplant but then the noto roto and the hospitals have let down Uh, or ZTCC is what we call in India. I have laid down certain criteria about the donor as well as about the recipient. And the donor's COVID test should be done. Mm-hmm. The cause of it should be different, not not because of this also. And then two COVID tests should be done. Then uh, once that is clear, then only they are listed for a for a uh, as a donor. And then only the call will come to us. so then other lot of precautions are taken also mm. the recipient also should have a covid test done recently before they come for it so the main problem is that we give immunosuppression correct correct and this immunosuppression when you give our 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 immunity of the body to fight this virus which is at the moment and but most of the patients who come on our clinic and you can ask dr gangu i mean sorry mr rishi ganguli or uh, or nayar or any patient or who has got a transplant done we always before even covid era before even this era of the covid problem we always always tell them that we have to protect themselves from infection mm. and not go outside 
and not to go in a group. And even if you go in a group, you start putting a mask. And that we tell well advanced even before they undergo transplant and even after one year. So this, what has happened around with the COVID, I think these all patients must be very happy because they are already doing <laughs> There are no different, different thing which is happening with I right. guess. So I think we'll that's see. a good good segue to yeah. bring in uh, Rishi and Bhavna. Uh, yeah. You know, Rishi, so would you want to... That this, so, the, go the, ahead. The, in the first slide, you said that uh, we are not alone. I think we are alone, but we are not lonely. Right. And that is, patients will tell more better than the, who has undergone the transplant. Correct. They correct. Will more better than what I can express. Right. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, I think on that, let us bring in uh, Rishi and Bhavna. Rishi, do you want to first, uh, you know, kind of get your video on and uh, uh, get your get off mute and uh, talk about how you are, uh, how the precautions you took from the time of your transplant has kind of seemed normal, has normalized what's happened with COVID-19? Yeah, sure. So, uh... I think, uh, as as uh, Dr. Mule said, you know, it's like they prepared us, and unknowingly we we found this uh, COVID nineteen lockdown to be a piece of cake for us. Twenty one days is nothing because we just went through one year of this. So right. for us, twenty one day or even a further extension of that is like, yeah, no problem. I I actually even set up my work environment so that I would, you know, I got myself Zoom activated and all a year back. So I right. kind of. Look at the heart transplant as a blessing in disease because it got me organized so that I could continue to work in such a situation. But of course, yeah, I don't go out. Of course, that's completely out. Um, I think after one year, uh, uh, I think they relaxed. Doctor that said you can uh, relax the uh, you know lockdown in the house situation. So I had already got myself a, a farmhouse to rent out. I wanted to go out into nature. But uh, right after I went there, you know, this whole lockdown thing came in and mom and dad said, we better get back to Bombay. And uh, yeah, so we are back in Bombay. I'm happy I came back to Bombay, quite frankly, because uh, we are on immunosuppressants. You know, medicines are not easily available in farmhouses. Correct. Correct. So we are, I, I have, a, we're blessed that we have people that can go out and get the medicines. Uh, it's, it, we have to get it from far away now that it's in a lockdown situation. But my brother helps me out that. But protection, masks, even the guy that goes out to get stuff, you know, um, he comes back uh, when he goes out and does a lot of shopping, he comes back, he has a bath, soap and everything. Mm. You know, so we're, we're, we're managing that quite well. And uh, my parents are also uh, pretty old and they're in their 70s. So they are also, you know, vulnerable. Uh, vulnerable in the situation. Mm. So now it's like we've had one year preparation for this. Right. So I'm actually happy and blessed and we're managing fine so far. Yeah. Right, right. So uh, Bhavna, I, sorry, go ahead, Dr. Mule. All these patients, I will, Rishi will recollect or Bhavna will also recollect and those other listeners to whom we have been seen before also will recollect that I always tell them that it is easy to put your mask than tell the whole world to put the mask. But now the whole world is putting the mask, but still you should also put the mask. <laughs> yeah. So I think Bhavna yeah. is one of the, uh, just for uh, the people who are listening to us, Bhavna did a double transplant. She did both heart and lung. Uh, so Bhavna, do you want to, I'm sure you had more restrictions and more, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, concerns as well. And how did you work through to, you know, manage with all those uh, precautions as well as what were the precautions that people around you needed to take? Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, hi, everybody. Like, um, um, uh, same as uh, Rishi said, like even I, uh, I took all the restrictions, like all the uh, precautions and all, I would not say restrictions, but all the precautions basically. And um, I, I used to take care in my food, I mean, in diet, exercise, and those things were important for me. And uh, like, like uh, as what Rishi says, mask panna hai, or jo, matlab, we were, uh, for the first few months we were isolated, but then <laughs> now it, uh, it was a journey. The doctor told me for the very first day, you have to be very calm. Ekdam, Patients say calm lena hai, yes. and that worked and 
doctor uh, doctor anmay mule is best world best doctor so every time like uh, whenever i thoda down bhi ho jata hai but they used to give me moral support and all and uh, like yeah things went very uh, smoothly for me right by right. taking our cares also right so i think doctor ek dar rehta hai and people are scared ki since we are on immunosuppressants uh, are we at a greater risk of uh, infection uh, you know due to covid 19 uh, so yes and no also because uh, uh, most of these patients have learned over the few years that to take the precautions for themselves um, uh, considering that whole world was covid before also this covid we came to know yes. and they were they were behaving like that and they are used to be used to be with that but mm-hmm. um, uh, having said this concern of uh, of uh, uh, this uh, deadly virus uh, which has suddenly come as a pandemic yes in a short way yes but by the time of one year or two year uh, those patients who are in immunosuppression their body immunity and this immunosuppression they get used to each other as i told them before also and slowly slowly their immunity also come to a certain level um, uh, see what these immunosuppressions we are taking is they don't know you are a virus or you are a organ which is needed for your body mm. they can't the drug cannot identify it right and that is why we have to take in precaution from this infection mm. because they will not fight with this virus also they will not fight with bacteria also and they will not fight with that heart or organ or pancreas or liver or kidney whatever they have with that organ they will they don't know any the the, the drug doesn't know about it correct or immunity also doesn't know kyon so the formation of this antibody against them so getting an immunity against that bacteria or virus is little delayed it is not totally stopped Hmm. it is not because immunology immunity of our body is very versatile hmm. and uh, it has a ability to identify uh, which is not belong which does not belong to your body and uh, that is why it starts fighting with that whether it is bacteria or virus but eventually they come to a state so um, it is not it is not uh, totally to be very worried and all the patients who are on immunosuppression will go haywire or something it's not like it's not that fear don't go with that so and majority of the people are taking the precautions of uh, protecting themselves and so that's it mm. so i think couple of patients are asking if you can also speak a little bit in hindi so if you can you know summarize some of the key points in hindi maybe so then that will be helpful so maybe this topic about immunosuppressants agar aap hindi mein bhi thoda bata sakte hain to might be helpful ha, so so jo patient ko heart transplant hua ya kidney transplant hua ya liver transplant hua hai jo log ye immunosuppression dawa pe hai jiski wajah se hamari badan ki fight karne ki body ki capacity jisko hum immunity bolte hain wo thodi kam ho jati hai kyunki jo hum naya organ jo naya dil ya naya dusre आदमी का दिल या किडनी या लीवर या पैंक्रिया कौन सा भी फफेड़ा कौन सा भी ऑर्गन जो हमने लिया है उसके साथ हमारी बॉडी फाइट ना करे इसके लिए वो दवा आपके लिए चालू है ना अभी ये दवा को ये पता नहीं चलता कि वो वायरस है कि बैक्टीरिया है कि ये ऑर्गन है किसके लिए मुझे दबा दिया जाता है या बंद किया जाता है तो दवा सबके ऊपर काम करती है तो इसका मतलब ये है कि जिस वजह के लिए हम दवा दे रहे हैं उस वजह के बावजूद अगर बैक्टीरिया और वायरस मेरे बदन में आ गई तो उसके खिलाफ भी ये दवा वो हमारे इम्यूनिटी को हमारे शरीर को ताकत को दबा देगी बंद कर देगी कि उसके फाइट मत कर तो ये उसका असर होने की जो बैक्टीरिया और वायरस का हमारे बदन में असर होने की तकलीफ होने की संभावना ज्यादा है इसके लिए हार्ट ट्रांसप्लांट या किडनी ट्रांसप्लांट या लीवर ट्रांसप्लांट या कौन सा भी ट्रांसप्लांट होने के पहले से ही हम हमारे पेशेंट को बोलते हैं कि मास्क पहना के जाओ बाहर का मत खाओ अपनी इम्यूनिटी बढ़ाओ थोड़ी अच्छी तो, अच्छी इम्यूनिटी बढ़ाओ मैंने प्रोटीन्स अच्छे खाओ ये हम सब पहले से ही बताते हैं कि हमारी ताकत अच्छी रह जाए अभी इम्यूनिटी यानी क्या है ये जो बैक्टीरिया का प्रोटीन है वायरस का प्रोटीन है हमारे दिल का जो प्रोटीन है दिल में जो प्रोटीन है या या 
लिवर का जो प्रोटीन है किडनी का जो ये प्रोटीन के हिसाब से अभी जो पीनट्स खाते हैं मूंगफली शेंगदाना खा, जो खाते हैं उसमें वो प्रोटीन के भी एलर्जी हमें रहती है बराबर सो एलर्जीज ऑफ द प्रोटीन सो वी टेल देम टू इम्प्रूव देयर प्रोटीन कैपेसिटी फ्रॉम बिगिनिंग एंड न्यूट्रिशन बेटर न्यूट्रिशन फ्रॉम बिगिनिंग to fight all these things at the same time we suppress the immunity on the other hand which will jo jo sorry main english mein wapis jata ha no it's okay you can do a mix i think probably jo jo hamare jo naya organ hai uske khilaf kaam na kare bas iske liye to hamare ek saal ke baad ya do saal ke baad jinka transplant pehle hi hua hai wo badan ek baseline pe aa gaya hai Hmm. वो हमारा जो नया ऑर्गन है वो एक्सेप्टेंस में आ रहा है मगर पूरा एक्सेप्ट नहीं करती है वो hmm. कभी भी दस साल के बाद पांच साल के बाद भी वो रिजेक्ट करती है इसके लिए वो दवा लेना जरूरी है मगर वायरस और बैक्टीरिया जो है जिसके खिलाफ हम आज बात कर रहे हैं जिसके hmm. लिए हम बात कर रहे हैं उससे प्रोटेक्ट करना रहना ज्यादा जरूरी है ज्यादा आवश्यक है वो पूरी दुनिया आजू बाजू में अभी उसके ख्याल रखते है तो हम उसके साथ ज्यादा रखना है हम अकेले नहीं है कि जो करते और बाकी सब बिंदास करते वो जो हमारे मन में था कि मैं क्यों मास्क पहनू मैं क्यों हाथ धो के खाऊ मैं क्यों बाहर का नहीं खाऊ मैं क्यों तो उनको हम बोलते हैं कि तुम बाहर खा सकते हैं मगर जो उबाला है जो कुक किया है वो रॉ कुछ खाना है सैलेड या चटनी या ऐसे आचार जो कुक नहीं होते है वो ज्यादा मत खाना वो अभी भी मत खाना राइट राइट ओके um one question i'll take a few questions at the moment uh, as well uh, my wife had her valve replacement surgery in may 2018 how often does she need to be checked if the valve is working well nahi saal mein ek bar karega ya 6 mahine mein ek bar karega to bhi theek hai everything is well hmm. okay thanks jo wall change kiya hai wo kaun sa tarike ka wall hai वो मेटल वाल है कि टिश्यू वाल है अगर मेटल वाल है तो उसके लिए एंटीकोगुलेशन लेना है उसकी जो टेस्ट करनी है वो हर एक महीना या पंद्रह दिन जो डॉक्टर ने बोला है वैसी करनी है मगर वाल चेक करना है तो छह महीने के बाद या एक साल के बाद या अगर जरूर पड़े तो तकलीफ होने लगी तो ही करना है नहीं तो करने की जरूरत है okay. uh somebody is saying during this corona pandemic vitamin c needed to be taken as suggested by a lot of experts to improve our immunity is it okay for transplant patients to take vitamin c we are on immunosuppression therapy yes 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 i i i don't think vitamin c will interfere with any of your uh, any of your immunosuppression drugs except the the grapes sometimes interfere but that is not because of vitamin c the other oxidants which are involved in that grapes that may interfere with some of your immunosuppression but vitamin c is okay and we do give vitamin c uh, immediately after post operative so vitamin c per se doesn't increase the immunity to that extent mm. that will uh, you know which will reject our heart or organ don't don't worry about it. right um and then there's another question how long does a patient survive after a transplant if he never gets a rejection or a major infection <laughs> crystal ball gazing <laughs> so i i i think uh, rushi or bhavna will tell that uh, much better because uh, before operation i have always 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 say and i keep saying that this operation is not for increasing the quantity of life yes. no operation on planet earth no virus on planet earth no treatment on planet earth or no yoga or anything on planet earth is going to change the quantity of what i am going to live and that i don't know how much i am going to live <laughs> uh, so so it is for quality of life let's accept it it is for good quality of life right right uh, rishi you want to come in yeah I want to say that in fact I was taking a shower this morning and I was thinking of that same thing what he just said and I was having the shower and I was thinking like you know I'm actually so happy that you know I have a much better life than it was before the quality of life as he said and these are the exact words I mean Dr Mulle has told us this at least 5 10 times in my multiple discussions with him and and I think that's the thing you know uh, once you go through that operation and you see the quality of life that is 
so more important. I mean, it's, it's, it's the key. When you're going to die, it doesn't matter. <laughs> because when it's your time, it's your time, I guess. But, but is it worth it for doing all of this for that quality of life? I couldn't understand it before. But today, you know, I, I knew it right after the operation itself. But one can only appreciate that wisdom that, Dr. Mulej has said that the quality of life, I was thinking what quality is telling me. He's still, I still have to have medicines after that. What quality is he talking about? But now I know what, what he's talking about when right. he says quality. And it's, it's worth it in spades. So uh, you, you I, have to take I, medicines, you have to wear masks, etc. But it's still... <laughs> totally worth it. It's worth in it. fact, I just want to ask one question. Can I button to one question which has been on my mind? Uh, so they are talking about the vaccines, I saw somewhere there's a race, all countries are moving fast towards the vaccine for coronavirus, right? They're saying things like India might even get something out by September, October, and things like that. There's a mad race for this, getting the vaccine out for this virus. My question is a heart transplant patient who's on immunosuppressants, which is suppressing my immune system to begin with, will the COVID-19 vaccination be something that we should stay away from because you're actually injecting some of the virus in us or and so therefore we're like ditch it just be on mass for the rest of your life what's your response to that on the vaccines for covid whenever it does happen whenever it gets lost for heart transplant patients uh, i'll tell you my answer but i think uh, dr talla is also there uh, on this with us and uh, he will answer you better uh, and uh, uh, do we need to is, enable then, dr talla to join is it yeah, he's, I think he's, he's an attendee. He's an attendee, T A L H A. I can see in there, but he have to upgrade him to Paris. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do that while you go ahead, doctor. In the meantime, I'll figure so, that out. Uh, I think uh, there are two types of vaccines we have the one is live vaccine, and second is attenuated or the half dead vaccine. Means what? That at the moment, what we are doing is that uh, whatever the, if it is polio or if it is uh, uh, smallpox or if it is tuberculosis, the vaccine or, or measles or rubella, whatever vaccine what we take is the small quantity of that protein is injected in us. And then our body starts developing and, and the antigen, antigen we are injecting in our body. And our body has capacity and time to develop the antibodies against that. Right? So that is what the vaccine does overall. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it is a specific protein against which we are developing these antibodies. Right. Right. So when, when we are targeting that, then I, I'm not an immunologist. So ideally, I cannot answer this question very clearly to you. But if it is not a live vaccine, and if it is an attenuated vaccine or a dead protein or a dead thing, which I think is about the coronaviruses, then we then don't mind taking it and other. So in patients who have got heart transplant for a first year, we advise the relatives of them to get this influenza vaccine and other vaccines so, so that they, are they not don't transmitting. Yes, yes, they are transmitting you. So the same thing probably can be done here as well than going for yourself for a vaccine. Right, right. Tala? Okay, got it. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. Yes. Hi. Uh, good Hi. morning, everyone. So, um, you know, we generally avoid giving live vaccines to all our transplant recipients um, for as long as they live post-transplant. So generally, as a preparation for a transplant, we check their uh, immunity titers or their protective titers for common infections. Like, you know, for instance, chicken pox, measles, mumps, all of those things. And if they need immunization, so all of those are live vaccines. So if they need uh, immunizations, we would give that before we would transplant them. After transplants, no live vaccines are allowed. So it remains to be seen when this coronavirus vaccine comes up, whether it would be a live vaccine or an attenuated vaccine or a dead vaccine. If uh, live vaccine, hoga, ye jo naya coronavirus wala vaccine, we will um, patients ko lene mana karenge, but ha, unke jo caretakers, hai, jaise Dr. Mule bata rahe the, immediate caretakers, hai, ghar par jo, uh, unka dhyan rakhte hai, immediate family members, we will advise them. But patients, we will advise them. 
अगर आगे जाकर इसका कोई इनएक्टिवेटेड या किल्ड वायरस वाला कंपोनेंट वाला वैक्सीन बनता है तो यस देन दैट वुड बी समथिंग दैट वी वुड टेक एंड अगेन ये सारी चीजें ऐसे ही नहीं मार्केट में लॉन्च होगी ये सारी चीजें मंथ्स क्यों लगते हैं साल क्यों लगते हैं वैक्सीन आने के लिए बिकॉज बहुत रिगरस एक प्रोटोकॉल फॉलो होता है जिसके एंड स्टेज पर ह्यूमन ट्रायल्स होते हैं मतलब मेरे और डॉक्टर मुले और अपर्णा जी जैसे पेशेंट्स विथ नॉर्मल इम्यूनिटी उनको पहले देते हैं फिर उसके बाद अगर उन्हें लगा कि हाँ चलो हम अगर इनएक्टिवेटेड वैक्सीन है तो हम इम्यूनो सप्रेस्ड पेशेंट्स को देंगे अगर उनमें सब उनके ट्रायल्स में प्रोटोकॉल्स में सब ठीक लगा फिर ही जाके वो कॉमन यूज के लिए वो होता है तो यू नो वी रेस्ट अश्योर्ड अगर ऐसा कोई प्रोडक्ट है मार्केट में देन वी विल यूज इट अकॉर्डिंग टू वॉट द गाइडलाइन राइट ओके Thank you, thank you, Doctor Tala. I got one small question. The Tala or immunologist or anybody here who can going on uh, doing going to uh, know the COVID is the one thing which everybody is talking about. Whether is immunologist or epidemiologist or infection control doctor or everybody, everybody knows everything <laughs> about the COVID. So now some there is one there is one uh, news that this uh, virus is not live virus. Right. right there was some thing which was going about it now if it is not live virus then is vaccine also will not be live vaccine right i don't know i don't know means i don't know. i'm asking maybe i don't know i think I, i think the information on this is changing so much you know as as uh, yesterday at a webinar somebody said we are in a marathon and in the first early stages to make any calls on any of this seems really i mean because everything is being tried out right there making some i think some 126 uh, different vaccine uh, initiatives are on so i'm and, sure that and by the time and by the time we come with one vaccine the, the virus will change its strain correct. and then it will be another new virus correct <laughs> so i think <laughs> so we just one, have to one, one thing i want to add is that uh, the availability of the medicines as rishi mentioned Uh, is availability of the medicine for yeah. these patients of immunosuppression is not a issue is everybody is getting everything is no i think i was i had that question as well because um, uh, i know in the case of say kidney patients we've heard there were some challenges in terms of distribution and then they were reaching out to their uh, you know the pharma companies and uh, figuring it out uh, through them um and there's one question here how many immunosuppressants to stock up so there are a couple of questions around the availability yeah there's a couple of questions around so i are, are you do you are you asking patients to reach out know, to you or uh, you know should they just reach out no, directly no, i know i have no patient complaint so far with me as of okay. my patients yet but okay. i'm just in general the the companies pharma companies who are what they are doing or what they are doing about it or they are promising that production will be continuing and i just i just want to know from so if my patient asks me i want some answer that's all so what we've heard so far is that the issue was initially especially was on distribution it wasn't an inventory issue so you know the pharma companies had enough stock but it was more about uh, getting it to the right so as rishi said it's easier in some of the bigger cities some of the smaller cities if there are patients they sometimes have problems getting it so i guess the general advice to somebody who's saying about stock up i think what we are hearing from people is like one month plus one month probably as a you know that's how much you should probably keep uh, as a guideline because you don't want to stockpile as well right so that just creates more problems um i guess there are a couple of more quite a few more questions i'm just going through this but uh one question while i figure out the questions is uh when the lockdown lifts or you know as and when it lifts can people get back to going into work or they must continue to if they were past that you know one year period or whatever or are they still advised to continue to work from home and get permissions from the companies to do that hello i think uh, the lockdown will not especially in a hot spot like mumbai where we are based mm. i don't think the, lo- uh, the the lockdown will just 
you know cease to exist tomorrow right i think it will be a phased uh, transition to normalcy if you can call it that hmm. and um, depending on what the government and the ministry of health and welfare decide i think our response to that would also be similar hmm. um, if if say um, from monday onwards the, the the lockdown rules are somewhat relaxed then we were just uh, discussing this amongst our team that you know we are going to then ask our patients to uh, start looking into local labs who can come to their houses to collect samples for their uh, blood levels of the immunosuppression the tacrolimus levels right. because so far we have we have advised our patients not to venture out or let anyone else come in so i think once uh, this uh, lockdown relaxes we are going to you know we are going to do this uh, uh, in a phased manner as well right. it will all you know, we are all learning as we go i think uh, you know next week i may say something differently so <laughs> we'll have right. to be prepared for that i don't i will not i would still uh, not advise the transplant patients uh, you know say monday the lockdown is uh, relaxed to um, you know go to their uh, work spaces because uh, again you know there's too too many people there with unknown uh, you know exposures histories symptoms so um, i think that would be maybe of another few weeks down the line um i think once uh, the the ministry of health and wealth family welfare says that yes they are confident enough to lift the deadlock on the public transport system right. and i think that, that would be sort of like a safety indicator that you know the government and the power higher ups are uh, are satisfied with uh, you know with the cases and i think that would be an indicator that yes you know maybe our transplant patients can uh, venture out and you know go do their work or what not or alternatively you might think that after they open up then you need to still stay in for two weeks see what happens to the cases and then probably yeah yeah i think yeah out. it's going to so. yeah it's going to be it's going to be a phased uh, step wise manner correct so there's a question that's come in from patient uh, since last two months her tac level has not been done due to lockdown uh, she's continuing with the same dose of medicine is it okay or should i really be trying for a tac level test very similar to what you just said so um, we have actually sent a message out to all our uh, transplant recipients saying that you know if their tacrolimus last tacrolimus levels were between such and such and if you know then we don't need to do we don't need to rush and try to do a tacrolimus level during the la- lockdown mm. uh, last week um i've had some patients tell me that they have inquired with the local labs in mumbai and they are willing to come in they are specially trained uh, with you know no contact whatever uh, kind of training that they have received from their labs and they are willing to come in and collect blood samples and process these levels for them so we have allowed some patients on a case to case basis especially where their tacrolimus levels were sort of out of range before um next week i think uh, we will send out another update depending on where we are uh, in terms of the government policies uh, about uh, repeating tac levels the patient who put that question um, i think it all depends on what her previous tac level trends were if they were stable i would say somewhere around you know 8 9 10 range um, then i would not worry about you know go looking for a lab to repeat another tac level especially if they are more than one year out of transplant right. this is general i mean i don't know if this patient has a kidney transplant liver heart has had previous rejection or not so all those things uh, come into uh, question here but as a general rule this is what we've been telling everyone right a uh, couple of questions for our patients on the panel rishi or bhavna uh, let me know who wants to take this do neurological issues after transplant eventually resolve is uh, one question neurological is brain related no it could be nerves uh, if you i mean depends uh, if people had some people may have things like brain fog or tingling in the nerves and things like that you obviously didn't have <laughs> <laughs> if you have to think so much then you didn't have uh bhavna did you have any neurological issues no no no, no. nothing like that no okay uh doctor then do you want to take this as to 
uh, we Vishay, know... there, is one, there is one question from uh, our another patient who is waiting for a transplant. Uh, how much time does it get takes it to get normalized mm. your daily activity after the transplant? Uh, so I think basically the first two months uh, with all the stuff, you know, the stitches and all that. It, it, I think the ribs are cut open or so it's like it's taking time for healing. So you're mostly in chill out mode for I think about a month, two months after the operation. Uh, I, I initially I think two weeks I still needed help with the bath. I think by the third or fourth week I could manage the bath on my own. Um, but otherwise, I think after two months I was pretty much back on track. But in those only, not going out anywhere. Just you know that. That's my kind of response. I hope I answered the question. Right. Uh, so one question yeah, so that's come on. It depends on everybody differently. How some patient will or some patient will come differently, but that's okay. So there is one more from uh, from Lakshmi and Tala for you that uh, there are a lot of uh, protein-rich diets mm. available in the market and protein supplements are available in the market. Uh, should we go for it? We always tell our transplant patients to uh, you know bulk up on protein reserves before undergoing a transplant and similarly post transplant to uh, you know proteins can never hurt um, especially in our cardiac transplant patients so it's always good to have proteins on board um, till date uh, you know if you go by the cdc and who recommendations um, you know, especially in this pandemic era, there's actually no diet, no fruits, no, uh, you no know, recommendations exercise yeah. that has been shown to uh, boost up a patient's immunity and to prevent them from, uh, you know, or make them less susceptible from getting these infections. Uh, you know, uh, Indian uh, uh, patients, they often have their parents, their grandparents have told them, you know, certain things, that if body ka immunity bade, ga, infection nahi hoga. I, what i tell them is as long as the, the products are natural uh, they are uh, you know they come from a clean source i don't see any harm of uh, uh, taking these uh, things you know vitamin c or whatever whatever uh, it could be proteins i don't see any harm uh, from them uh, going going back to the uh, previous question uh, that was brought up the neurological side effects. Mm. The most uh, uh, common ones that you see with the immunosuppression uh, is headaches. Okay. Um, headaches uh, are very common with uh, tacrolimus. And uh, the, the, the general teaching is that the headaches will ease up after one to two months. The body sort of gets acclimatized to it and it, it, it eases up. Um, there are more sort of severe manifestations of uh, neurological toxicity with tacrolimus, uh, which uh, if that occurs, uh, you know, we identify it quickly and we switch it over, switched over tacrolimus to another med medication. I think we've had, uh, and Dr. Mule would know before I joined the transplant program, ek do patients aise the jinko bahut severe reaction hua tha, full personality uh, change ho gaya tha and uh, they went into a psychosis kind of thing and soon as tacrolimus was stopped and switched over to an alternate agent, unke sare symptoms bhi uh, achhe ho gaye the. Neuropathy uh, hota hai, uh, par bahut rare hai. Maine shayad maybe 5 ya 6 patients mein significant neuropathy dekha hoon. Uh, jin mein ye hota hai, un mein, you know, koi aur condition hoti hai jis mein neuropathy hone ke chances hote hai, jaise ke diabetes, Mm. Both common hai, uh, nerds ko involve karta hai to okay. shayad unme neuropathy or ye sab sari tingling changes hoti hai to aksar agar humne diabetes ko achhe se control kiya multivitamin supplements diye to wo wo bhi 3 4 mahine mein wo bhi uh, effect kam ho jata hai okay a uh, couple of specific questions uh, so one is this if one fails to forget to eat immunosuppressants for a period of 4 to 5 days or more does it lead to fatality <laughs> one or two doses but this is four to five days okay four to five days yes no doubt uh, it does and uh, there's only one person to blame there yourself yeah uh, my daughter had viral myocardial 
carditis and was on ECMO therapy. Any suggestions regarding what precautions she needs to take going forward? Uh, Dr. Mule, do you want to take that? Say again. Uh, my daughter had viral myocarditis and was on ECMO therapy. Any suggestions regarding precautions she needs to take going forward in the lieu of the, because of the COVID scenario? Right. Now, the viral myocarditis, there are two types. One improves, one does not improve. And the, if she had an ECMO therapy and she has come out of it and is now is going doing good, then yes, she will she'll be good. Uh, whether we should take precaution against this COVID, yes. It is universal. Mm -hmm. I don't see that you have uh, myocarditis. That is why you should take more precaution or something like that. So uh, the, the, the precautions will be the same for everybody. So now you are a normal person like any other person. Uh, whatever precautions everybody takes, I think you have to take as well. Right. Uh, one question, should we go for biopsy schedule considering this pandemic or should we postpone this for, by two to three months? Uh, most, of our, uh, uh, most of the transplant societies, the International Society of Heart Failure and Lung Transplant, the American Transplant Society, all of them have um, recommended avoiding routine protocol driven uh, biopsies. Um, however, if the patients are having signs or symptoms of rejection, then I would say don't sit, just sit at home, report it to your physician or your surgeon. We may need to do a biopsy then. But routine biopsies, yes, they are on stop. There are various other ways uh, where we can monitor for rejection. Uh, for our lung transplant patients, uh, we have been asking them to, we have given them a home peak flow meter and uh, we know their baseline trends of peak flows and uh, we, we have continued to follow them and we've asked them to send uh, the readings to us at least once every you know two weeks and if we see any decline in that then maybe that would trigger a biopsy certainly no routine biopsies for a heart transplant patients um, um, there are uh, certain other blood tests that we can do but uh, i haven't had to uh, do that uh, so far uh, during this uh, lockdown there are certain sort of non invasive methods to look for rejection which are not the best but uh, we can use those routine biopsies on hold for now okay we had a little bit of a hitch our facebook live got interrupted but we have resumed it again okay um Okay, so there are a couple of other questions. So do we need N95 mask or even normal one will do in case of transplant patients once the lockdown is over? Um, N95 is ultimate protection. There is no doubt about it. And those who are susceptible, like healthcare workers, who can get exposed to patients from close distance, uh, I think it is must, must, must for them. Those, patient, those people who feel that they are going into uh, uh, public places or other things or traveling and uh, you are in a red zone probably as what government has declared red zone, orange zone and green zone. And if you're in a red zone, I would say, I would say the, the scientifically N95 mask is a better mask. Mm. Um. So there's one question saying that those who are on the list for or registered for transplant, can they go to work after the lockdown? Yes, they can go to work after the lockdown with the whatever precautions. Uh, but uh, uh, I think I think the Rishi is one of the one of the patients who have started working from home and working. Uh, but in public, uh, without going in public, and uh, he is uh, he is innovative in that way to continue working uh, in spite of going into the public. Uh, I would I would I mean not everybody can do it. Not everybody everybody has different goals and different professions and uh, different things in life. I understand that. But as far as possible, try to avoid going to the public. Yes. Right. Um, Bhavna. Uh, question for you, right? Uh, 
currently, how are you managing the the restrictions of the lockdown? Are you kind of just keeping jo aap kar rahi thi pehle wohi kar rahi hai, or have you added more controls or more? Uh, uh, yeah, as uh, as I said, like uh, uh, since one year we are at home only, and uh, yeah, I've started going out sometime for lunch and sometime I go for evening walk. So, wo jo abhi sab stop kar diya hai. But I do exercise at home. and baki jo routine hai that i'm continuing with that and uh, good diet time to time diet basically uh, i don't take a high protein diet uh, because mujhe thoda aisa lagta hai ki digestion mein thodi mujhe problem hoti hai but yeah i take uh, precaution in food also no outside food and uh, thode thode time mein khana hai and i take my water intake also and uh, like uh, I wear mask ऐसे मतलब if somebody comes at home अभी तो definitely lockout में तो nobody comes but I take those precautions and um, uh, right now we are totally uh, मतलब lockdown है तो no maids around us so just two of us me and my husband so much meaning isolated sort of and but uh, I am having good time right right okay um There's one question: Is it advisable for us to work out in this COVID period, fearing there should not be any exertion? Uh, Dr. Mole. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is definitely after the transplant. I think you are as normal as one should be, and the exercise tolerance has improved. And uh, at home. Uh, you can certainly do yoga you can certainly do the other activities you can certainly do and even if you look after your home and uh, start cleaning and all i think it's a good exercise as well as the work both is done uh, and and you don't need require to be on your treadmill or you know when you are cleaning the house with the machine and then put yourself on a machine for your exercise uh, mm-hmm. both are <laughs> avoided <laughs> right I think one of the things we are telling people is that don't try something new in terms of exercise because you don't want to get injured at this point and have to go for an X-ray and things like that. So I think that's one advice we are giving people. Um, I think I'm just conscious that we are running short. We may take a couple of more questions. Uh, uh my transplant was done in jan 2017 i think we've already addressed this uh, about being more susceptible so i will uh, can i make a request sure if you can search i think my wife meeta gangri is got a hand up over there i think she's in <laughs> not clear she wants to ask a question can we just answer her question i don't know i thought we answered her question already oh okay yeah because uh there were a couple of questions for meeta from meeta which were which were in any case addressed so they may not have okay. been specifically yeah. from her okay. but yeah uh there was uh, one question can a heart transplant child go to school post lockdown as and when school resumes with uh yes. necessary precautions yes absolutely they can go they can go easily and i think the children are well protected and because they have got a different immunity system which some some of the immunity systems get uh, uh, atrophied or get uh, uh, not as active as we grow uh, in adult adult life the children are quite safe and they have got good ability to do that right right okay um there's a couple of questions around weight um so there's one question and then there's a i guess a related if a patient has to reduce weight for lung transplant has to work really hard to reduce weight uh, they are on 24 hours oxygen but gains weight after transplant will there be any problem in future and then there's another one how to manage the weight and diabetic issues post transplant apart from medication uh as well so kind of related to weight and lifestyle i think yeah it is absolutely about the lifestyle and uh, the lifestyle is what going to change by the coronavirus the life is not going to be changed much mm. and uh, the lifestyle is what is costly and what is putting on the weight and what is giving a problem life is not mm. uh, there is a big difference in that and that corona has told us actually uh, the the 
main thing is that that to keep yourself active mentally and physically and uh, that is what is going to keep us going going ahead i think uh, bhavana rishina rishi i think there is on the same lines there is a question from uh, our another patient lakshmi who is asking that uh, what is the routine of this heart trans uh, tra other transplant patients uh, how they are managing their uh, day to day uh, if uh, bhavana or rishi can tell us uh to her and also i think if you are when uh, rishi and bhavna if you talk about you know did you gain weight did you lose weight how did you handle uh kind of getting back to shape yeah so i definitely uh gained weight for sure um and um i i will have to be honest here i didn't do the uh you know walks that i should be doing and every day that's a mental battle that i should be doing a walk even in the house if i should just walk up and down Uh, I don't do it, so <laughs> my bad. I'm sure <laughs> Doctor Bolle will be disappointed. No, just addi in, addi in addition. In addition, just sorry to interrupt. In addition to that, we were on steroids, and the steroid is the one which can increase your diabetes and increase your weight, both of the things. So then, that is the only way that exercise can help you out in this case. And yeah. your uh, CPT means cardio CPT means cardio pulmonary exercise tolerance goes up quite. high after your transplant so yeah right go ahead. right go ahead. and i also uh, one of the medicines i think one year has passed for me so i don't have to take some wisalon tablet anymore and those hunger pangs that i used to have earlier has gone down so therefore now i don't you know eat midnight snacks and all i don't bother to get them plus mm. try to control it more from a reduce the quantity of food since i'm not doing so much activity versus uh i i'm not doing as much activity walking i should be doing at least my 40 minute walk in the morning i don't do that mm. so i and i am to blame for that but if you are don't don't listen to me please do your walks i guess yeah that's that's what i have to add about the weight gain part yeah right. bhavna you want to say something bhavna yeah i i was uh extremely uh, i uh, extremely reduced my weight the after my operation like uh, i i was somewhere around 48 and then i came to 38 jaise and uh, after my operation i've started gaining my weight after 2 3 months uh and now i'm 44 jaise but uh, i feel this is like uh, i i've been to one dietitian also but then she said ke uh, there is um, weight is quite okay and you have to more focus on your strength and all rather than fats and all so i like um, yeah and gradually i have increased my strength by doing work and all so i'm managing myself like that i don't eat much because uh, both heaviness bhi ho jata hai so thoda thoda matlab i just take in proportion mein thoda our uh, time break deke 2 uh, 2 hours mein i take my food jaise and uh, um weight is quite okay i'm i'm, I'm i feel uh, now i'm okay uh, i i want little more <laughs> teen char kilo thoda extra ho jayega so that would be fair enough for me so i'm happy with this speech nowadays yeah what i used to be and now i'm quite better yeah right right thanks thanks bhavna um so and anything on your thing sorry go ahead dr mole there is one question by someone the uh, takshila that uh, suppress infection like varicella and uh, and the tuberculosis mm. due to other immunity uh, what about the immune what uh, about after immune suppression if they flare up they do right. flare up and we do know that and we do take care for it and uh, tuberculosis varicella many of my patients tuberculosis has come up but it has got under control it was little bit difficult to manage these patients because uh, immunosuppression drugs and tuberculosis drugs they interfere with each other and they bring the levels up and down so little little tricky but uh, but it's not the end of it and all of them have come out quite well so not to worry about those drugs i do not know how covid will behave and covid will do what um, if it if it comes out uh, i have yet to see anybody i'm i'm just keeping my finger crossed that all our patients remain good and and so and and we don't have a reports from around the globe also that something has happened because of covid to the transplantation so let's see mm. good thanks 
Uh, yeah, somebody Yogesh says uh, regarding medication this month, we've had hassles getting the medicines and had to pay a higher cost as courier services were closed. So getting this medicines was an issue. So this is, uh, yeah, hopefully this gets streamlined because more and more essential services are in place now. Um, somebody just asked for a general comment. Strokes or heart attack has come down during the pandemic. Any comments? I don't, I mean, the, probably, probably there are some instances the patient are not able to reach the hospital. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, some patients, sometimes it has so happened that the activity of ours has gone down. We are locked down at home and the uh, response of angina or a chest pain or other things is not that much. So I don't know, Talav, is, if you have any insight on so, it. It's a very interesting uh, question. This was even reported by the American uh, College of Cardiology and American Heart Association that in United States, there's a 30% uh, the reduction of patients coming in with heart attacks. I don't know about the statistics for stroke, but at least heart attacks have gone down by 30%. Uh, you know, whether this is because of, I don't think the incidence of heart attacks are going down. I think it's just that patients are petrified and scared of uh, leaving their homes. symptoms You know, this is a reason to worry because I am worried you know, after the lockdown ends, there will be this huge deluge of patients waiting to come in with uh, bad heart failure. Correct. Um, Correct. So uh, it's not good. Um, and, you know, my advice would be if you have stroke-like symptoms or heart attack-like symptoms, you should follow the emergency protocol in your city, country and go to the, you know, uh, report to some kind of medical facility as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, we heard of a couple of cases where they went in and then they needed to uh, go in for, uh, uh, this was in, I think, Delhi or UP, they needed to go in for uh, uh, testing and they were put in an isolation room. It's an elderly lady and she had a paralytic stroke and she got so scared in the isolation ward that she came back, uh, you know, at the end of her isolation, but without any further testing. So uh you know we are going through a difficult time and it is important to not delay these things because i think people are ignoring fluctuating diabetes levels they are ignoring uh, minor symptoms till they become worse right so one question my wife is patient of pulmonary hypertension and final option is transplant she's maintaining 85 to 90 oxygen levels how long can she wait I think uh, uh, she should get uh, uh, registered for a lung transplant and uh, wait for a donor because it's not going to be easy to get a donor in a COVID mm. situation for many reasons, multifactorial it is. And, uh, uh, but if she gets registered and wait for it, then because see in deterioration in these patients, see how fast or how bad it is, very difficult to predict, very difficult to answer that question. And we should be get ready and we should be prepared for uh, eventuality, so it is better they get registered uh, instead of just waiting. Right, right. Okay, good. Thanks. I think we're pretty much done. Um, is Ifroni N120 medicine good to take for patients of IPF? Any, any thoughts on that? Anybody wants to take that? No? Mutala, any, any comment? I don't think... Uh, I am uh, trained enough to answer that okay. question. That's not, not a problem. A, we don't have to. Quite a... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, we are, we've addressed pretty much all the questions. We've gone over our time as well. Uh, thank you for all the attendees who've been uh, very interactive and had come back with a lot more questions. Uh, so just a quick uh, you know, thanks to the panelists as well as the attendees. Uh, and uh, I think we do, as everybody's talked of, doctors talked of, that uh, organ donation is going to be a bigger challenge going forward. So please do your bit and ask friends and family to become an organ donor, become an organ donor yourself. Uh, be safe, be responsible, stay at home, reduce the load on our healthcare system, on doctors and nurses. 
Uh, I think now people know that wherever they go, they must confirm their appointments. But in the current scenario, things are changing a lot. So check the specific hospital or the test center you're planning to go to. Carry your prescription uh, IDs. And if you're an attendant or a caregiver, uh, yours as well as the patient. Uh, use teleconsultation. Uh, again, more and more hospitals are offering that video consultation, teleconsultation. So do not ignore the symptoms uh, and you know at least get on the phone or video call with the doctors. Uh, ask for help if you're feeling anxious or stressed. Uh, exercise at home, but don't injure yourself. You know, it's, we need to be smart about this uh, and not lead to failures. Uh, so yes, I think uh, that's all. And uh, as always, uh, once again, thank you, Dr. Mule, and thank you, Dr. Tala, for jumping in at short notice like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and thank you, Rishi and Bhavna, uh, your inputs were hugely valuable to everybody. So thanks. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank Let's you. Stop this stream. Thanks.